Hey, what's happening, everybody? This is Robert the Leather Cowboy right here, Premier Leather Crafters. Let me get focused. Uh, I hope you guys can hear me. I got a lot of new toys that's out now. Um, we got the new mic, so we mic'd up to make sure that you guys can hear me very well. Um, today, what I'm working on is a, a new biker mask. <clears throat> One of the, my, my clients had called and wanted her son to have a biker mask to go along with his new motorcycle dad that he was that uh, he received uh, he graduates uh, in this month now that it's May he graduates so she wanted him to have a biker mask to go along with his his motorcycle so I uh, came back and we tossed around some ideas find out the things that he liked and we came up with this if you guys saw the pictures yesterday and I started tooling on this a little bit then I stopped because the one thing that I want you guys to see is that this is all just from the transferring of the artwork. And I really love this piece because it's no cuts involved at all in this piece at all. This is going to be a straight bevel and modeling tool um, particular project. Uh, and I thought it would be a prime time or a great opportunity to stop and just show you guys the power of your beveling tools. Now, I have uh, selected five, four here that, uh, that we're going to use. All different shapes, all different sizes, so we can hit those tight curves and, and those tight small spaces. But this is all beveling tools. See, no cutting. All the, You can tell... Uh, I wish I, I should have stopped and and got all of the numbers for you guys that the beveling tools that I use. But I really want to show you guys just the power of beveling. And this is a unique, a very unique. I saw several videos. I watched several videos. And I did a whole lot of studying uh, from the greats like uh, Jim Linnell. Uh, that's with Tandy, uh, who's retired now. Man, I saw him do some great, beautiful pieces well, with just beveler and a modeling tool. So I have my modeling tool here too as well that we're going to use just to fine tune and smooth out some of the rough edges. But I'm going to adjust my camera here so you guys can actually see what we got going on here. And hopefully uh, this will work out just fine so you guys can understand that you don't have to you don't have to cut every piece that you're working on. So let's get situated straight. I think we got the the uh, the camera adjusted well enough to where we can do a little bit of work. So just so you guys can see this, uh, and that's not actually, yeah, I think that'll work just fine right there. I'm having some technical difficulties, but I want you guys to see this, actually. So, let's do a little prop work here. Now, there we go. So, now, we're going to sit here and uh, we're going to finish beveling this piece out. Just so you guys can understand and see the power of beveling. And we just want to use those. Uh, another video that I done where we just did a whole bunch of rapid taps, so you can see. Uh, and it, I like using the little rapid taps because it also gives me more control over my beveling tool. It gives me more control so where I can pull and do a lot of turning. And you won't see a, a lot of times when you're beveling, you'll get to see where the the leather is starting to pull and it looks like a little wrinkle or crease, but we'll show you how to fix those too uh, with your modeling spoon. So you can make that nice and smooth. And the key to this here is to just stay with your artwork, stay with your lines. Don't stray away. And that's what I said, use the little small rapid taps so we can make those nice curves and turns. And it doesn't drag across your leather. You want it to be very smooth. And even on cleaning your, your uh, getting that calcium build up off of your beveling tools. Um, you guys may have seen another video that I've done to where we took where I took the uh, the Dremel tool 
and use my 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 jeweler's rouge and just put that on the, on a uh, a felt tip on the bevel on the Dremel tool and just clean all of the dross and the calcium build up from the leather clean that off of there so when you're using it it doesn't drag or create a drag and you can turn those corners real nice and neatly and just keep right on working now again in this particular piece there's no cutting at all this is what's going to make this piece really stand out and the thing about beveling in any piece not just in this one but the keys to beveling is to know what side you want to bevel on to create the illusion um, that you're trying to come up with so what I would recommend is even in your your artwork uh, we talked about color pencils and another video to where when you're tracing your artwork out uh, if, if you uh, are lucky enough to be a freehand drawer uh, drawer or artist I think that's the best word to say a freehand artist uh, I, I would still recommend using color pencils because then you will know what particular piece to to bevel what particular piece to cut and if you notice I changed uh, my bevel tools here because this is a real tight a real tight corner right here and I want to make sure that I get up in that corner and bevel real well very well and then we'll go right back to our old one switch that and go right back to the the larger one and we'll continue right the bevel and you want to stay right there on that line and nice little rapid taps I think you guys can see me tapping on, on with my mallet and we're just getting right up in there now I'm going to complete the eyes just so you guys can see just the power of beveling and you don't have to cut a lot I wish there's there's nothing better that I would love to give uh, newer crafters out there than to don't cut every line every line doesn't have to be cut that was when I first started taking the classes at Tandy uh, about six years ago actually it might have been longer than that oh my god we might be pressing about 10 years now but uh, when I took the classes at Tandy that was my thing um, because from the old school crafters and when my dad was teaching me he, I knew he went in and cut a lot of stuff. I mean, and sometimes cuts can really make a piece. And I mean, it, it'll really bring a piece out for real. But then I learned from uh, my teacher at Tandy that when you're using your swivel knife to make cuts, cuts, you only want to show separation. Everything else can be beveled. You don't have to cut everything if it's not to show separation so if you're not showing the separation then I think that's cool right there you guys can see that that's all bevel work and you see how the nice rounded parts of the eye is and it just looks natural so when we get ready to come back with the modeling spoon and we're going to uh, mold all of this part of the inside of the eye down a little bit to create that nice burnished look so when I get ready to antique this it's going to really make those eyes pop like the eyes are coming out of the darkness especially when we get ready to to tan uh not tan but to uh detail and paint all of the inside portions of this mask here uh <clears throat> another quick quick insert that I want to drop real quick you guys notice that the the shape of the piece here let me fix my camera back right because I think we're done showing you what the beveling can do <coughs> excuse me but here's another quick thing and I think this is very important too to all crafters um, maybe you can see you can see my pencil lines here from for the actual mask itself and but the shape of the piece that I cut is kind of rectangular like 
the reason why a lot of crafters would do that and uh, the reason why a lot of crafters would overcut the particular piece that they're working on is sp specifically for this reason. When you're stamping, when you're beveling, and especially if you can't afford the more expensive grades, your Herman Oaks or your European Oak leather, uh, lesser grade leathers, the, the backside of the, the flesh tends to give a little bit. So when you're tan when you when you're beveling and when you're stamping and when you're working and tooling on your piece, it'll cause that that leather to warp or to create a weird shape. So to keep that leather from losing its shape, you cut it a little bit bigger than the piece that you're actually working on. That's the key part. So that way, it don't give and it doesn't give and change, change shapes on you. So when we do cut the final piece of the mask out, it'll be the exact ideal piece of shape that we're looking for. This is Robert the Leather Cowboy Muhammad. I hope this helped you guys out in today's video. And we're talking about beveling. Uh, to see the finished piece when I get done completely with this thing, uh, we probably got about maybe six more, eight more hours involved into it. Uh, but you can always go on to Premier Leather Crafters uh, on Facebook. Uh, you can also check out the finished pieces on PLC, Cowboy PLC on uh, Instagram. Uh, I'm on Twitter. I'm on Flickr. I'm on Tumblr, uh, Pinterest. Pinterest. Um, you can always check out the final pieces there, uh, as well as if you're a part of the groups, the same groups that I'm in, uh, you can always see the final pieces there. Thank you guys for coming and staying with me for a little while. I'll see you guys on the other side in a minute.